before I begin the WP Optimize review, I'd want to mention a few points that you should keep in mind. Optimizing a WordPress site for performance has become a nightmare for any webmaster who owns and operates a WordPress-powered website. There is, however, no way out. Google wants every website to load in milliseconds. The issue with WordPress-powered sites is that the primary content management system is a beast that takes a long time to load. Things only get worse as you add plugins, images, videos, third-party scripts, and web fonts, among other things. However, what other options do you have? Without those items, you cannot survive. You will require plugins like an SEO plugin, a forms plugin, and others. You'll include images in our videos in your blog postings. All of these factors contribute to the weight of the web page and slow it down. That is not to say that you cannot use WordPress to create a quick website. Numerous optimization tips and tricks exist to help you attain remarkable speeds. Using a suitable cache plugin is one of those strategies, as is ensuring that your database remains optimized. What is WP Optimize Plugin? WP Optimize is a simple caching and database optimization plugin for WordPress. It was initially introduced as a database optimization plugin, but over time evolved into a three-pronged optimization suite. What purpose does it serve? The plugin accomplishes three tasks, optimizes the database, compresses images, and caches a website static files. Properly doing these three tasks can result in significant speed boosts for your website. A fast-loading website can result in improved search engine ranks. WP Optimize Plugin Setup Tutorial WP Optimize is a very simple to use plugin. After installing and activating the plugin, you will be sent to the general settings area where you can enable or disable a few features. The first two choices in the general settings section enable or disable rapid access to the WP Optimize and caching menus via the admin bar. I'd recommend that you activate both. This eliminates the need to visit the dashboard each time you want to access the settings. You can enable or deactivate trackbacks and comments on previously published posts using the following two settings. However, trackbacks and comments that were already present before blocking them will remain. They are here to stay. This is beneficial if you have hundreds of posts and don't want to edit every parameter manually. The following option is to choose a logging destination. WP Optimize will maintain log files. If you wish to save the logs to a specific location, you can do so from here. Finally, if you are unhappy with WP Settings Optimize and wish to start over, you can delete all settings with a single click. You can modify these settings later by navigating to Dashboard, WP Optimize, Settings, Database Optimization, the primary function of WP Optimize is database optimization. As I previously stated, the plugin was created to optimize database performance. Caching and additional functionality were added afterward. To get started with database optimization, navigate to Dashboard, WP Optimize, then Database. There are three tabs here. The first tab contains all of the options for improving the database of your WordPress site. What you will see is as follows. You are not required to understand what these options truly do. All of the options listed can be selected, and the optimization can be executed safely. However, when it comes to eliminating unapproved comments, I recommend that you approve all comments that you wish to retain first. Selecting that option will delete all comments that have been placed on hold for manual approval, regardless of whether they are spam comments. Additionally, some people prefer to maintain a few post revisions on hand at all times in case they need to roll back. I, for one, do not complain about post changes since I ensure that each post is thoroughly reviewed before publication. This implies that I ensure that the post contains all necessary information. In the event of future upgrades, I just upload the updated information. That is it. However, if you wish to retain post optimization modifications, Deselect it and then conduct the optimization. The good news is that you can either select everything and run optimization simultaneously, or you can run optimization separately for each option. I recommend that you perform a complete backup of your website before performing any optimization. This ensures that you have a backup of your website in case something goes wrong throughout the optimization process. The Tables tab will display all of the tables in your database and will attempt to indicate which plugins make use of specific tables. That's a good thing since if you're deleting a plugin and want to guarantee that the entire database is deleted, you can identify the tables and manually delete them using phpmysql. To be honest, the Tables tab does not provide any action possibilities. It will merely provide you with some data that you can utilize to do manual tasks. Individual tables can be optimized. However, if you upgrade to the premium version of the plugin, the Settings tab, 
This is not the same as the General Settings tab. This is where you can configure the plugin to perform automatic database improvements and even specify how much previous data the plugin should preserve. It is always prudent to retain at least two weeks worth of data. Bear in mind that scheduled cleanup is a beta function, which means that errors may exist. I recommend that you do not enable this. Rather than that, perform optimizations manually. Images optimization. Options for image optimization are accessible via dashboard, WP Optimize, then Images. This section enables you to optimize the size of the images you post to your site. It can also optimize existing images. At the moment, the image optimization feature makes use of the resumption.it services. That is a service provided by a third party. The developers are currently in the process of developing their premium image compressing service. Three tabs will appear after you navigate to the Images tab from the left menu of your WordPress dashboard. The first tab is open for free but the remaining two are reserved for premium customers. This is what I objected to. You can obtain lazy loading for free with a variety of plugins, and a few themes even include it by default. Thus, the decision to preserve lazy loading as a premium feature was completely illogical. The free version's only available feature is the image compressing service. There are a few options available. What you will find here is as follows. There is nothing novel in what you will discover here. This is the standard configuration for any image optimization plugin you may already be using. In terms of unused images, images and lazy loading. If you have a premium version, you can simply delete them. If you do not have a premium subscription, you can manually delete unused images from the server. The simplest way to locate unused images is to navigate to the media library and search for images that are not currently in use. To enable the lazy load option, you can utilize distinct plugins that support both lazy loading and image optimization. Caching options. WP Optimize has caching options available. The caching settings are pretty simple to understand. In case you are a newbie, the ease of use will thrill you. You can access the caching options through dashboard, WP Optimize, then cache. Once you get into the caching section, you can find five different tabs. This is what you will see. The first tab is Page Cache. This is where you should enable page caching. In Cache Settings, enable caching for mobile devices and disable caching for logged in users. If you enable cache for logged in users, they may see stale copies. This is not helpful if you are building some form of membership site. So, if your site doesn't have a membership option, you, as an administrator, can see cached pages. This may hamper your progress with publication and updates. The next tab is Preload tab where you can preload cache files before a user opens a page. If you are on a shared server, you should not be doing this. Preloading cache files can improve user experience only if your server can handle such extra tasks. Usually, a shared server is not powerful enough. So, enabling preload can likely make your website sluggish, or even inaccessible. Use this only if you have dedicated resources at your disposal. The next tab is the Advanced Settings tab where you can determine which pages should not be cached. You can also determine which cookies should not be cached. Additionally, you can list all browser agent strings for which you don't want caching. Usually, this section, as the name suggests, is for advanced users. If you have a simple blog, avoid these settings. If you have an advanced site, but if you have no idea about what to do here, you should hire a developer to get the settings. You can also ask for help from the plugin developers if you have a premium version. Gzip compression is the next tab where you can enable Gzip compression. This is helpful, and you should enable it. In case you are using Cloudflare and you have Broadly compression enabled, you need not worry about this. You can still enable it, but having Broadly compression on simply nullifies the need for using Gzip compression. The final tab is the Static File Headers tab. This tab essentially allows you to enable browser caching. I think the developers should have used the name Browser Cache, but whatever. Enable this and the default value of 28 days is perfectly fine. You should set it to a small value if your website's design changes frequently. If you don't want to change your website's design for a very long time, you can set it to a higher value. Even 365 days is fine. Minify options. Minification of HTML, JavaScript, and CSS files is a good choice. You should do that, as it can dramatically reduce the page load time. Once you enable Minify, additional settings, extra tabs starting from the JavaScript tab will become available. On the first tab, set everything to Minify. Once you have done that, move on to the JavaScript tab. This is where you will see this. Starting from the top, enable JS minification. Enable merging with caution. If something on the front end is breaking, Disable merging. Enable the third option only if minification and merging are causing errors. If enabling is not fixing the error, disable merging. Keep minification on. 
because that isn't going to cause errors. That will only remove some unnecessary characters. You can also selectively choose JavaScripts and prevent minification or merging. Finally, you should selectively defer JS. Don't defer all JS files. Some JS files are necessary for the proper rendering of the site. Deferring all JS files can break your site. The next tab is the CSS tab where you will get advanced settings. Minification of CSS is fine. Merging can cause issues and break your site. Use caution and check everything thoroughly. Do not inline CSS. That's never a good idea. And doing so with minification and merging enabled can break your site. Also, don't strip print related stylus sheets. Certain themes need that. If you are enabling it, check your site thoroughly. Similar to the options of JS, you can selectively prevent CSS files from minification and merging. You can also load CSS files asynchronously. I will not recommend doing that. CSS, by definition, is render blocking. Trying to load CSS files asynchronously will lead to what is called FOUC, flash of unstyled content, and that gives rise to a bad user experience. Don't do that, especially when Google's new algorithm update is focusing on user experience. I will recommend that you don't use any page builder plugin because they use a lot of CSS and trying to merge them or asynchronously loading them will break your site. So, you should keep things simple. The fonts tab is where you can decide how your website handles Google fonts and font awesome. Well, I don't recommend using either. They can add extra weight to your site. If you do want to use Google fonts, I will recommend that you localize the fonts using a plugin called OMG. OMGF. Not only can OMGF help you to load Google fonts locally, but also ensure that you are not violating GDPR because the fonts will load from your server and Google will not be logging user IP. The settings tab has some default options already selected. Leave them as is. They are perfectly fine. Finally, you will have the advanced tab where you can find the list of all JS and CSS files that have been processed. You can also enable debug mode if you are a developer and you want to debug issues caused by the plugin. The one option I like here is default exclusions. You should enable this. This will ensure that WP Optimize will exclude a few files that are known to cause issues when minified or compressed. That's all. WP Optimize Pricing. There is a free version of the plugin, but if you want, you can always purchase the premium plan. The premium version will give you a few extra optimization features. The price is quite reasonable. You need to pay $49 per year if you intend to use it on one or two sites. For using it on up to five sites, you need to pay $99 a year. For an unlimited site license, you need to pay $199 a year. Should you use WP Optimize? Yes, you should use WP Optimize. WP Optimize is simple and easy to use. There are no complex settings to deal with, and it does deliver great results. However, if you want your website to be super fast, I will suggest you switch to a server that has Lightspeed web server like Name Hero and use Lightspeed Cache. Together, they can do wonders. Thanks for watching.